Section 14e, Spoken Communication. 14.23, Speaking Platforms. Verbal communication includes everyday interactions with coworkers, communicating up and down the chain of command, and sometimes speaking to audiences. Being aware of various verbal communication platforms can help ensure the message being communicated is delivered and received as intended. 14.24. Delivery Formats Your approach to delivery of the spoken message is usually affected by several factors, including the time you have to prepare and the nature of the message. Three common delivery formats are impromptu, prepared, and manuscript. Impromptu. Impromptu speaking is when we respond during a meeting or take the floor at a conference. Speakers may do this when they have to speak publicly without warning or with only a few moments' notice. To do impromptu speaking well requires a great amount of self-confidence, mastery of the subject, and the ability to think on your feet. A superb impromptu speaker has achieved the highest level in verbal communications. Prepared. Prepared speaking or briefing refers to those times when we have ample opportunity to prepare. This does not mean the person writes a script and memorizes it, but prepared delivery does require a thorough outline with careful planning and practicing. The specific words and phrases used at the time of delivery, however, are spontaneous and sound very natural. Manuscript a manuscript briefing is the delivery format that requires every word spoken to be absolutely perfect. The disadvantage of a manuscript briefing is that people demonstrate a tendency to lack spontaneity, lack eye contact, and they stand behind the lectern with their script. These mannerisms may have a tendency of losing the audience's attention. 14.25 Types of Speaking Typically, the types of speaking used in the USAF include the briefing, the teaching lecture, and the formal speech. Briefing. The major purpose of a briefing is to inform listeners about a mission, operation, or concept. Some briefings direct or enable listeners to perform a procedure or carry out instructions. Other briefings advocate, persuade, or support a certain solution and lead the audience to accept the briefing. Every good briefing has the qualities of accuracy, brevity, and clarity. Accuracy and clarity characterize all good speaking, but brevity distinguishes the briefing from other types of speaking. A briefer must be brief and to the point, and should anticipate some of the questions that may arise. If a briefer cannot answer a question, he or she should not attempt an off-the-cuff answer. Instead, he or she should request an opportunity to research the question and follow up with an answer at a later time. Teaching Lecture the teaching lecture is the method of instruction most often used in the USAF. As the name implies, the primary purpose of a teaching lecture is to teach an audience about a given subject. Teaching lectures are either formal or informal. Formal lectures are generally one way with no verbal participation by the audience. Informal lectures are usually presented to smaller audiences and allow for verbal interaction. Formal speech a formal speech generally has one of three basic purposes, to inform, persuade, or entertain. The informative speech is a narration concerning a specific topic, but it does not involve a sustained effort to teach. Orientation talks and presentations at commander's call are examples of informative speeches. The persuasive speech is designed to move an audience to believe in or take action on a topic, such as recruiting speeches to high school graduating classes. Entertaining speeches often include humor and wit to entertain listeners, such as a speech to entertain at a dining out. 14.26 Basic Communication Tips Beginning any communication with basic communication tips in mind and being mindful of others when speaking and listening will enhance communication skills in any environment. Some basic military communication tips that can be used in any setting are provided here. Rank. Differences in military rank can be a barrier, real or perceived, to communication in the USAF. Many of us instinctively communicate differently with those senior in rank than we do with those with those who are junior in rank. We must constantly strive to be candid, direct, and respectful with everyone we communicate with. Jargon. Do not overestimate the knowledge and expertise of others when it comes to jargon. 
Be careful with excessive use of career field specific jargon and acronyms, but feel free to use jargon when appropriate. As the speaker, it is your responsibility to ensure your communication is understandable. Be inclusive. Remember our diverse force. Sometimes we inadvertently exclude members of our audience by falling into communication traps involving references to race, religion, ethnicity, or sex. Remember this concept when designing visual support as well. Adhering to good taste and sensitivity will keep your message credible and ensure you reach your audience. Tone. Tone is not just what you say, but how you say it. Use of tone can be valuable when enhancing a message, but it can be difficult to portray in written communication. Speakers use gestures, voice, and movements to communicate. Writers do not. Emojis do not have a place in written formal communication. Recognize the limitations of expressing tone through written communication and pay close attention to how the message may be perceived. Courtesy. The first rule of communicating courteously is being polite. Forgo anger, criticism, and sarcasm, and strive to be reasonable and persuasive. Be patient and tactful, regardless of the challenges of delivering a message. If you have to, push back from the computer, take a deep breath, slowly count to ten, then review your message to ensure it is professional and courteous. Make it personal. When appropriate, use pronouns such as we, us, and our to create rapport and keep your audience involved. Using pronouns also keeps your message from being monotonous, dry, and abstract. Use I, me, and my sparingly and be aware of how the use of you can be perceived in some situations. Formal. Good morning, sir. Versus informal, hey, or what's up, is always the more professional approach to greeting or addressing someone. While in today's USAF much communication among peers will be informal, it is essential to recognize, particularly during events and ceremonies, when formal, professional communication is appropriate. Be positive. Cultivate a positive message and give praise where praise is due. Rather than focusing on problem areas, optimism can encourage acceptance of a message. Also, encourage and be receptive to criticism in the form of helpful questions, suggestions, requests, recommendations, or information. Audiences often sense and appreciate sincerity and honesty. 14.27. Communication Delivery an effective voice drives home ideas. However, communication experts believe over half of the meaning of any message may be communicated non-verbally. Several suggestions for effective verbal and non-verbal communication are provided here. Rate. There is no correct speed for every speech. However, consider that people can listen four to five times faster than the normal spoken rate of 120 words a minute. So, if you speak too slowly, you may lose the interest of an audience who is processing information much faster than you are delivering it. Also, consider speaking at a faster rate to indicate excitement or sudden action, or at a slower rate to hint at a calm or more serious message. Volume. Volume is a verbal technique that can be used to give emphasis to your speech. Consider speaking louder or softer to emphasize a point. A softer level or lower volume is often the more effective way to achieve emphasis. Depending on the type of room, it may be necessary to talk louder in front of a large crowd to ensure everyone in the room can hear the message. When possible, use a portable microphone, particularly in large auditoriums. If the audience must strain to hear you, they will eventually tune you out from exhaustion, but the front row will not want to feel like they are being yelled at the entire time either. Pitch. Pitch is the use of higher or lower notes in voice range. Using variety in speech pitch helps to avoid monotone delivery and capture the listener's attention. Starting with a voice range that is comfortable for you and then adjusting pitch for emphasis may help make communication more interesting. You can use a downward, high to low, inflection in a sentence for an air of certainty and an upward, low to high, inflection for an air of uncertainty. Pause. Pause gives the speaker time to catch their breath and the audience time to absorb ideas. Short pauses usually divide points within a sentence, while long pauses note the ends of sentences. 
Longer pauses can be used for breaks between main points or transitions between an introduction, body, and conclusion. Another use for the pause is to pause for effect or to set off an important point worthy of short reflection. Sometimes a pause may seem long to the speaker, but allow time for a true, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, pause for emphasis. Articulation and pronunciation. Articulation and pronunciation reflect mastery of the spoken English language. Articulation is the art of expressing words distinctly. Pronunciation is the ability to say words correctly. Unfortunately, and unfairly, people may consider word pronunciation or mispronunciation as a reflection of your message. Listen to yourself, better yet, if possible, ask someone to listen to you for practice, and make sure your words are distinct, understandable, and appropriate to your audience. Length. In our military environment, you must be able to relay your thoughts and ideas succinctly. A key rule in verbal communication is to keep it short and sweet. Know what you want to say and say it with your purpose and the audience in mind. Eye contact. Eye contact is one of the most important factors in nonverbal communication. Eye contact lets listeners know the speaker is interested in them, allows the speaker to receive nonverbal feedback from the audience, and enhances the credibility of the speaker. Gestures. Gestures are the purposeful use of the hands, arms, shoulders, and head to reinforce what is being said. Effective gestures are natural and should not be distracting to the audience. Purposeful, effective body movement can be described as free, yet deliberate movement. 14.28. Overcoming Anxiety Public speaking is often one of the biggest self-induced fears we experience in the workplace. Some individuals appear to be immune to stage fright, while others are paralyzed with fear prior to stepping onto a stage, up to a podium, or speaking from any platform. Most airmen are exposed to public speaking opportunities in academic environments. Additional speaking opportunities can help individuals begin to feel more comfortable in the spotlight, such as small, localized events, award ceremonies and commander's calls, where the audience is familiar. To prepare for these events, a draft script may be available to practice with. Having a wingman as a supporter and a fan in the audience can be a big confidence booster while developing public speaking skills. Having anxiety about public speaking can hinder the ability to get a message across successfully. However, appearing too relaxed on stage may give the impression that the speaker is not fully committed to the presentation or to the audience. To overcome anxiety try to think of it this way. Most often those in the audience are really just glad it's not them up there on the stage. And for you, you're on your way to becoming a more confident, competent public speaker by accepting the opportunity for personal and professional growth. Whether you are engaging in public speaking for the first time, or if you have been on the stage several times before, here are some simple steps to remember to ensure your message is received clearly and as intended. Know the material, the script, or topic to be covered at the event. Analyze your audience to reduce your fear of the unknown. Envision yourself having a successful experience in front of the audience. Practice using a recording device, video camera, full-length mirror, or an audience of your peers. Be prepared to allow yourself to mentally feel confident about the experience. Present a professional image to build self-confidence and credibility with the audience. Smile, your audience wants you to succeed. Chances are your audience won't know how nervous you are if you don't mention it. Take a short walk right before you go on stage to help release nervous energy. When it comes time for the event, it's time to deliver. Focus your attention on the purpose of the event, not on yourself. Connect with your audience. Study Guide to TSGT October 1, 202388. When possible, encourage audience interaction, such as head nods or reassuring affirmations. 14.29 Common Nonverbal Quirks While seeking opportunities to sharpen public speaking skills, practice to eliminate some of the crutches or habits that speakers sometimes fall into. 
Tips on overcoming nervous habits are included here to help public speakers become consciously aware of them and work to overcome them before stepping into the spotlight. Life Raft The life raft is a term used when a speaker seeks the safety and security of a podium as though his or life depends upon it. Sometimes standing at the podium is necessary when using a stationary microphone, a script, or notes. While this is an acceptable place for a speaker to stand, when possible, try to venture away from the podium to connect better with the audience. Awkward hands. Awkward hands are typically more of a feeling the speaker has than it is an observation of the audience. Simply allowing hands to hang naturally may feel awkward, but it's perfectly natural from the audience's perspective. Practice allowing your hands to hang naturally, and it'll eventually begin to feel natural. Cage Tiger The cage tiger is a term used when a speaker paces across a stage from one side to the other without stopping. Using the width of a stage to connect with an audience is a good idea. Just be sure not to pace back and forth to where the audience feels like they're watching a tennis match. Relax and settle into a natural rhythm of using the stage purposefully. Rocker Rockers are caged tigers on the road to recovery. Rockers have settled their nervous energy somewhat, but still have not become completely comfortable with standing still and simply talking. As you practice, make a conscious effort not to fall into the habit of rocking on your heels or swaying side to side. Much like allowing your hands to hang naturally at your side, with practice you will become more comfortable simply standing confidently and addressing an audience. Too cool. Some speakers overcompensate for a fear of speaking by trying to look extremely comfortable. It is a good idea to appear relaxed but not at the expense of appearing unengaged or disinterested in speaking to your audience. You may have conquered your nerves, but keep in mind that you want to reach your audience and keep their attention. 14.30 Effective Listening Gaining a better understanding of the listening process begins with understanding the difference between hearing and listening. Hearing occurs when ears pick up sounds being transmitted by a speaker or another source. Listening, on the other hand, involves hearing, while also paying attention to and giving consideration to what is heard. In other words, listening involves thinking about and making sense of the message. Effective, active listening involves engaging verbally and non-verbally in the listening process to appropriately respond, comprehend, evaluate, and remember a message. Effective listening helps build trust and mutual respect. Leaders with good listening skills often make better decisions. Informative listening. In informative listening, the listener's primary concern is to understand information exactly as transmitted. Successful, effective, listening occurs when the listener understands the message exactly as the sender intended. Suggestions for improving informative listening are to keep an open mind and set aside bias. Listen as if you had to teach it. Take notes to help recall the main points. Ask questions to clarify or confirm your understanding of the message. Study Guide to TSGT October 1, 2023-89 And maximize the use of the time by mentally repeating the message and absorbing the information in a way that makes the information more pertinent and applicable to you. Critical Listening Critical listening is usually thought of as the sum of informative listening and critical thinking because the listener is actively analyzing and evaluating the message the speaker is sending. Critical listening is appropriate when seeking input to a decision, evaluating work or a subordinate's capabilities, or conducting research. Suggestions for improving critical listening are to listen as if you had to grade it, take notes to help recall the main points, ask questions to evaluate the intellectual content of the message, and maximize the use of the time by first understanding the message and then evaluating the information. Empathic listening Empathic listening is often useful when communication is emotional or when the relationship between speaker and listener is just as important as the message. Use this type of listening as somewhat of a prerequisite to informational or critical listening. Empathic listening is often appropriate during mentoring and counseling sessions and is very helpful when communicating with family members. <laughs>